Loss of the center system hydraulic system in the Boeing 777 is a big deal because most of the components, hydraulically operated components on the Boeing 777 are located on the center system. But thanks to the excellent design of the aircraft and the redundancy built into this aircraft, there's no problem continuing to operate the aircraft. However, this represents one of the most labor intensive emergencies that a flight crew can face in the 777. And United had to deal with this recently on a departure out of Sydney. Let's check it out. It's been very tough keeping up with everything that's been going on in the aviation industry lately. But one way you can do that is to hit your subscribe button for this channel and check your notification settings to all so that you get all notifications. I frequently get emails from folks asking about a certain event that I've already published days ago. So double check your notification settings on all your devices because every time you upgrade something, your subscription may be lost. A quick update to the lost wheel story on the United 777 out of San Francisco that diverted to Los Angeles. It looks like it was a wheel failure based on these photographs sent in by a Blanco Lirio viewer. The brake assembly is still shown here on the axle and the retaining nut and the bolts that retain the re axle retaining nut are in place on the axle. And this appears to be the outer race to the wheel bearing on the outside of the wheel. Here's a closer look at the axle with the retaining nut in place and the bolts that retain the axle nut in place. There's the Timken roller bearing and the outer race located right there. So it looks like the wheel failed just outside of the outer race and it rolled right off up and over the retaining nut and off of the aircraft. This aircraft has since been fixed and returned to service and ferried right back up to San Francisco. Regarding the Lantum 787 that injured 50 people who apparently were not wearing their seatbelts when they should have been in cruise flight. Remember, anytime you're in your seat, keep that seatbelt fastened. The only information we have right now on that is some testimony from some of the passengers. And this particular passenger said that the pilot came back and he asked the pilot what happened. And this passenger says that the pilot said that all of his screens went blank briefly and then reappeared. So until we get the flight data recorder, will we know the story of exactly what happened to the Lantum 787 on its flight from Auckland to Sydney. Intermittent loss of power to the aircraft, which essentially to me sounds like the two main AC, the left and right main AC circuits. If there was an intermittent loss of that power, did the autopilot kick off suddenly? And if the autopilot kicked off suddenly, did the flight crew overreact and bunt the aircraft in a nose down condition? Or was the aircraft out of trim and the aircraft resumed its trimmed position with the autopilot off? One other form of turbulence that you can encounter that can replicate this is if you fly perpendicular through the wake turbulence of another aircraft that has just passed, you'll be in perfectly smooth air and then you'll hit a huge bump depending on how close you were behind the other aircraft as you cross perpendicular to his wake turbulence wham like a big speed bump and then you're back in smooth air but this sounds more powerful than just simply crossing somebody's wake turbulence and there was no other word of turbulence in the area prior to this incident so until we get the fdr then we'll get the rest of the story the normal way of raising and lowering the landing gear on the boeing 777 is via the center hydraulic system each landing gear bogey has six wheels on it to help 
distribute the massive weight of the Boeing 777, which happens to have a max gross weight of 777,000 pounds. And if we swing around to the back side of the landing gear, we see four lines, four hydraulic lines, two brake lines, one there and one there, and then two hydraulic lines that go to this hydraulic actuator right here. Because of the six wheels, in order to turn the Boeing 777 while taxiing on the ground, especially at tight 90 degree turns below 10 knots, the rear two wheels of the bogey pivot like a large truck in order to prevent scrubbing of the tires and allow you these tighter turns. And this is facilitated using this pivoting arm located right here and this hydraulic actuator located right here powered by the center hydraulic system and connected in association with the nose wheel steering system and the tiller up in the cockpit. So as captured by plane spotter New York Aviation, United's flight 830 on Monday, the 11th of March, departing Sydney, he captured this failure of the hydraulic system. There you can just see the hydraulic fluid misting out of the right side landing gear right upon initial departure. There's that fluid leaking out right about in that same area we were just talking about in the landing gear. So it's more than likely one of those flexible lines and it's pretty common. If you're gonna lose a hydraulic system, especially a center hydraulic system, it usually occurs when one of these flexible lines fails that is attached to the landing gear. And this flexible line has to undergo a lot of flexing and motion as the gear is retracted and extended. And these hydraulic lines do have a life limit on them and they're, they're dated and banded. And so you know when to replace them according to date, but sometimes they fail before they, their time is expired to replace them. So that's a relatively small hydraulic line in a large hydraulic system. Maybe some of you maintainers can tell us exactly the center system reservoir quantity here, but it's gonna take a while for this system to leak down to the point before the pilots even get a warning of either center system quantity low or center system pressure low. It could be that perhaps somebody on the ground notified the crew of the aircraft that they noticed something leaking out of the right main landing gear of the aircraft on departure. A quick review of the redundancy of the Boeing 777 hydraulic system. You've got three separate hydraulic systems. Any one of these can power all of the primary flight controls of the aircraft, any one single system as each of the primary flight controls are connected to each of the hydraulic systems. Each hydraulic system has several sources of power. The left hydraulic system has the left engine driven hydraulic pump and an electric demand pump. The right hydraulic system has the same thing, the right engine driven hydraulic pump and the right demand pump. The center system has two large pneumatic pumps using bleed air from the system to power and they are demand pumps, so they come on when they're needed. And it also has two electric pumps as well to back that up. So a series of four pumps to power the center system hydraulic system, any one of which can power the, the entire system. But when these gear, when the gear and flaps are in motion, it does require a large volume of hydraulic fluid. And there's also the backup of the Ram Air turbine, the RAT, which can provide some center hydraulic system trapped fluid to the primary flight controls in the event of A, either a loss of both engines or B, a loss of both main AC electrical systems or C, a loss of all three hydraulic systems. Again, this fluid is trapped in the center hydraulic system so that in the event of a leak like this from the landing gear, this fluid will be trapped separate from that system. So here on Flight Radar 24, looks like the crew took off about 1.30 a.m. Zulu and headed out about 40 minutes or so before turning back and coming in to land. Again, this is a labor-intensive emergency, but it's not a time-constrained emergency. So you've got all the time in the world to sort this out, especially when you have enough fuel to fly all the way from Sydney to San Francisco, and you've got a bunch of checklists to cover. Once you get into the loss of center system pressure or quantity checklist, it's gonna direct you into how are you now going to lower the landing gear and the flaps. You're gonna to have to use the alternate landing gear extension 
and checklist and the alternate flap extension and checklist. The alternate gear extension on the Boeing 777 uses a DC operated motor, I assume off of the battery or hot battery bus, to unlock the up locks to the doors and the landing gear and allow the landing gear to free fall. The flaps have an electrical alternate extension system which bypasses the hydraulic system altogether but is a very slow system to lower the flaps so you got to allow for a lot of time to very slowly lower the flaps also you're going to be getting into your emergency landing checklist you got to have go around considerations now that your gear and flaps are kind of stuck in that position what are you going to do in the event of a go around well you're going to be using a flaps 20 landing you're going to be landing with considerably less flaps than you normally would flaps 20 the same thing you would do for a single engine landing again for go around considerations in a normal greaser landing in the boeing 777 and this is why i love this airplane so much the gear is tilted up like this so you could just roll those bottom two wheels onto the runway and then the gear will slowly tilt forward and then each of the six wheels will contact the the runway individually not all at once and so it just makes for buttery smooth landings and an excellent suspension in the uh, oleo struts of the boeing 777 getting that ground effect and just roll it on like that just like butter note also the automatic spoilers deploying as soon as the weight on the wheel switch senses weight on the wheels the auto spoilers deploy now in this picture from new york aviation of the emergency return of united airlines the experienced 777 guy will know right away that's center system hydraulic system failure note the doors are still down in the open position normally the doors close behind the landing gear once it's extended indicating that they had to use alternate gear extension gravity to get the gear down and also the landing gear is not tilted for landing the tilt system does not work on emergency gear extension it just gravity drops the gear down into the position that it was when it was retracted and as we watch this unfold flaps 20 landing Boom, all six wheels on each bogey hit at once, causing a bit of a lurch. And then the spoilers need to be manually deployed. So the pilot manually deploys the spoilers after landing instead of them automatically popping out right as soon as the weight on the wheels is sensed. Boom, normally they would pop out right there. He gets the nose wheel, he's got the aircraft under control. Okay, let's deploy the spoilers and come out to a roll out to a complete and uneventful stop the thrust reversers of course still work because they're work operating off the individual hydraulic systems left and right and the main landing gear doors have plenty of clearance to clear the runway in the open condition during this landing wheel brakes auto brakes and anti-skid are still operating normally as they are all operated off of the right hydraulic system right here regarding the redundancy of the braking system on the boeing 777 normal brakes are on the right system alternate brakes and reserve brakes are on the center system and then there is a accumulator for a fourth way to get this aircraft stopped plus you have these two isolation valves to help trap that fluid for alternate and reserve brakes over two hours later after the aircraft landed looks like there was still some hydraulic fluid leaking out of this line and hitting the hot brakes over here but the arf took care of that no problem and all the passengers deplaned the aircraft back at the gate uneventfully so good job of the flight crew of united's flight 830 out of sydney back on monday doing one of the most labor intensive emergency procedures that you can handle in one of these aircraft but this is exactly what we train for constantly in the simulators the checklists are there. The training is there. Good job. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. Be sure and check your subscription settings to try and keep up as I try to keep up with everything that's going on out there today in aviation. See you here.